They will be in the end of my nation men who ride chariots, who are in reality pseudo men. They will drop off their women at the gates of the Moxus, who are clothed, but they will appear to look naked. And upon their heads will be the likes of a lean camel's hump. Talking about today's immorality we face in the society. Welcome to your weekly program, Light of Islam. I am Aisha Ahmed. On today's episode of the program, we will be looking at the roles of families in curbing immorality in the society. Reflections. The importance of a Muslim family in the society. Unity, closeness, and protection are the actual meaning of the Arabic word usra. This word refers to a group of people connected together through close ties that keep them united. The traditional Muslim family is an extended family which usually include parents, children, grandparents, and the elderly relatives. Many Muslims believe that the extended family foster greater stability of love and support for one another. However, the Muslim community is basically built up into a strong and developed society. Allah says in the Holy Quran, O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other. Quran chapter 49 verse 13. The Muslim families are considered to be at the heart of every Muslim community. Each member is charged with certain roles and responsibilities, especially by establishing role model families to which others can look up to and emulate. This kind of family also possess prophetic guidance and Islamic teachings in general. In addition, the family, since is the building block of a larger and stronger society, is charged to produce the following in order to strengthen the Muslim community. One of the most important is the Islamic orientation. Secondly, each and every Muslim family unit in a society is expected to play the following roles. Parents are expected to provide the community with sound and healthy offspring. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Marry the loving and childbearing woman, for I shall have the largest number of followers amongst the prophets on the day of resurrection. A society can be considered as healthy when its family members possess good morals and manners, respect for one another, irrespective of age, tribe, or religion. This helps to bring cooperation amongst themselves as well as maintain peace, unity, and harmony within that community. Here are some easy tips that can help guide and improve you to build a healthy muslim family attending islamic lectures forums seminars and reading of islamic materials a few to mention amongst many others listening and watching of islamic programs other media like online research and asking questions about family related issues and above all consider good communication flow between parents and children and so Welcome back from that break and if you're just tuning in, the program is still Light of Islam. Up next on our lineup is the presentation on the roles of family in curbing immorality in the society. And our guide for today is my namesake, Sister Aisha Bint Mahmoud. Stay with us and get informed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Wa ala ahlihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi shirah li sadri wa yassir li amri Wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli In this segment today we are talking about the role of family in Corbin in morality Being parent is not a hobby it is a task that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you for. And it is a responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon your shoulder. It is not by choice that you are parents. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyyatihi. 
that every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. So the hadiths went on to expand that the leader of people is the guardian of his subject and he is responsible for them. The man is the guardian of his family and he is responsible for them. The woman is the guardian of her husband's home and his children and she is responsible for them. The servant of man is the guardian of his master's property and he is responsible for them. No doubt each one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. So now this teaches you that the role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on you is not something you can joke with or is not something you can take casually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tahrim, Ayah 6, that, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ku anfusikum wa ahlikum nara that all you who believe protect yourselves and protect your family from fire whose fuel are people and stones upon which Allah has appointed angels harsh and severe. They do not disobey Allah, but they do that which he commands. So protecting yourself here connotes you refraining from committing sins, you trying your best to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you protecting yourself from anything that would lead you astray. And protecting your family also means that you try your best to bring them up in the best possible manner. In a manner where they understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their Rabb. You create an environment for them that is pure. An environment that would allow them to grow to become better Muslims. So it is our job to make sure that these children grow up to become wise, they grow up to be hardworking, they grow up to be productive, they grow up to be friends to humanity, they grow up to be kind to people, and most importantly, we have to be sure they grow up to be God-fearing individuals, because these are the people that would make up our society tomorrow. So we bring them up in such a way that our children are an asset to the ummah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we talk about the concept of tarbiyah in Islam, just as the gardener whom, when he plants a seed, he sees to it that that seed grows in a good condition. He tries as best as he can to take away any weed that is around that seedling. And he keeps nurturing that seed until it grows and starts blooming into a beautiful flower. That becomes your condition and even higher when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with a child. You need to be there for the child. You need to nurture the child. And the weed we're talking about could be anything in the environment that could hurt the child anything in the environment that could bring a negative impact or negative effects to the child. So we need to nurture that child to grow up into a God-fearing individual. And that is our role as parents. So we need to also understand the fact that children are born pure. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sahih hadith that, no child is born except on al-fitra, meaning on an Islamic or a primordial nature. It is the parents who make him either Christian, either Jewish, or magician. And the hadiths continue. So this is to show you that no child has been born with the intention to do wrong. No child has been born with the intention to be an armed robber. No child has been born with the intention to harm anybody. Children are born pure. And this innate nature of them to do good is what you as a parent are meant to nurture in that child. To be sure that this child grows up to be a responsible individual. To be someone who brings value to the society. Not someone who people wish they never knew him. Or someone who people wish they, they don't even want to see him around. You have to try your best to invest in it. And children are amazing creatures in the sense that when you see a child doing something, 
just try as best as you can to look around the environment, to think and, and, and realize maybe this child is doing something he has seen someone in the environment doing because they just don't come up with things themselves. They see, then they try to imitate and add their own on it, which is why I'm still stressing on the fact that children are born pure. When you do your work at that initial stage, because they are new to this world, they are trying to learn, and it is your responsibility to teach them, to nurture that innate nature of them to do good, to try your best to teach them how to live in the environment, how to behave in the environment. And another thing that is important is your children see you as a role model. You are their first role model. So you can't tell your child, do not lie. Or you keep preaching to them about lying, but they see you every day lying. It doesn't work that way. Or you can't tell your child, okay, go and pray. And now the child goes and pray, and he comes back. You're still there seated, watching TV or chatting on your phone. Even if this child is making effort to go and pray and always seeing you seated, he has never seen you pray. He will stop praying. So the key is you have to be what you want your children to be because they learn from you. And it is amazing how children right from the very first month of birth, they are observing things around them. So since these children are pure, they are born pure, then you need to try as best as you can not to expose them to anything that would have negative impact on them. So like most parents, you see that, okay, when they're going to take their bath, they carry the child along. When they're trying to change their clothes, they change in front of the child because we believe they are too small to understand what is happening. But trust me, it keeps accumulating in their brain. They keep observing. They keep watching how you do things. And it keeps accumulating in their brain until a point in their life where it begins to manifest. So you see a small child having desires for elderly women, and you begin to think, where did he learn that from? When in the first place, we were the ones that started it. So you need to try as best as you can to protect that child, to take away any weed around the child, so that we nurture our children. And another thing we do is we try our best to, maybe when our children see things on celebrities, when they see indecent dressing, we, we invest in it, we buy it for them, thinking that is love for our children. But that is not love because do not forget that these children are not yours. They are amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is going to ask you about how you brought them up. So there is a hadith from Abu Dawood where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking about when a man dies, everything stops except three things. Number one is the sadaqa jariya. Number two is knowledge that people benefited from. And number three is a pious child who will pray for you after your death. So when you don't invest in the upbringing of your child, or when you teach your child that music is life, cartoon is life, it gets to a point where when you die, you don't have anybody to pray for you because you didn't expose the child to that aspect of life. He doesn't even know how to pray. You send them to Islamic school because you just want to have free time, not because you want them to go there and learn. So you need to invest in them. If nothing, this should give you a motivation to invest in the upbringing of your children. Do not forget these children are the fabric of whom our society would be made of tomorrow. So if they are good, then we have a full again that our society tomorrow would be good. But if our children are not good or they are on the wrong path, then we don't have any certainty that our society tomorrow would be good. So investing in your parents and in your children's upbringing is very important and it is very key. And right from young age, you begin to notice things they are doing. And the relationship you build with them at that particular time in their life is what determines if your child is able to be confident to walk to you and tell you this and this is happening. Because you've built that relationship with them. But once a child comes to you and he wants to tell you his problem, and maybe he said one thing he did wrong, and you begin screaming at the child, or you begin scolding the child without even allowing him to finish his story, 
then that is detrimental for your relationship with, your, with, the, ch with, the, with the child. Because he knows if he comes to you, you're not going to give him a listening ear. He knows if he comes to you, you're going to make an issue out of whatever difficulty that child is going through. So the emphasis I'm making is, you start this building right from a very young age. You start this investment from a very young age. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you. Yes, there are parents who are trying, but the children are going astray. Do not judge them. If you can make dua for them, make dua for them. And if you're that parent that you're struggling, but your child is not getting on the right path, ask Allah for help. Parenting journey starts right from when you get pregnant and it doesn't end until a certain age, maybe when you lose the child or things like that. But you need to ask Allah for help. May Allah ease our task for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Masha Allah, Sister Aisha bint Mahmoud for sharing your time and your thoughts on this program. Always remember, my dear viewer, to invest positively in your child's upbringing because they are the building block of the family, society, and the nation as a whole. And on that note, we come to the end of this week's edition of the program. Don't forget to join us next week, same time, same station, for another educative episode on your weekly guide, Light of Islam. I am Aisha Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.